Hi guys, this is Steve, V6WZ. I've had a few emails asking about how I combine my BOG phased arrays and switch directions in the shack. It's unlikely that what I do here others will duplicate exactly, but maybe you can get some ideas that can work at your setup. Besides showing my switching system, I'll show you how and why I chose to combine my broadside BOG pairs in the shack and how I can switch from pairs to single wires. I'll show how I split and route different antennas to different radios and how I mount all this in the shack to minimize noise ingress. Let's get started. Since I have multiple SDR radios that I use for both medium wave recording and skimming spots to the RBN network, I wanted to have all or most directions available in the shack to route to any one radio. Each BOG wire has an equal length feed line that runs back to the shack. Any extra length required to make the lines equal is rolled up in this bin. These feed lines all have to be electrically equal since I'm phasing them in phase. The wires enter the shack and each feed line is connected to this combiner splitter selection board. These cables to the right are my CAT5 control lines for power and switching to each BOG. There are eight feed lines, two from each pair. Let's zoom in on one pair. First, I have a gas discharge tube to dissipate any lightning events. And then, I have a normally closed relay that when activated will switch out that feed line going to the combiner. I do this for two reasons. One, I can isolate and listen to each wire separately to identify any problems or noise issues. And secondly, as I'll explain in a few minutes, I have the ability to do a TDR sweep on each coax line to identify any breaks or problems. Notice if a feed line is deselected, it is terminated in 75 ohms to maintain input impedance to the combiner. In this diagram, T14 is a Murata 5474C choke set up as a Magic T or zero degree hybrid combiner. The output of the combiner then goes into another magic T to split that into output A and output B. Each of these outputs then go to the, my switching matrix. This way, each pair is available to two radios. Output A and output B from each pair is sent to a relay that is normally closed through a 75 ohm resistor to ground. When activated, that pair, or direction, is selected and sent to the radio. In other words, any of the four broadside pairs are available at output A or output B. Okay, well, actually, to complicate it just a little, there are actually eight directions available, because in the field I have a feed line toggle relay to switch in a short feed line to a BOG in the 180 degree opposing direction. So, for example, my European wire feed line gets toggled to be the Oceana pair. Same with JA to South America or East and West. I designed this board in KiCad and had it made in China. I had to buy five boards because that's a minimum order, but the total cost was only $35. In fact, the shipping was more than that. I encourage you guys to consider giving KiCad, or something like it, a try to build up your own projects. Listen, I'm not an engineer. I've never studied electrical engineering or design. I'm a geologist and a ham with a science degree. Within a few nights, I had figured out how to use this program. It's really not that hard, and it really makes building project-specific devices easy. I made a short starter video about using KiCad. As always, I'll put a link to that video in the description below. Anyway, notice how I mounted this board. First of all, this switch combiner panel is just a piece of plywood screwed to the shack wall. I bought this very thin 0.1 mil sheet copper and screwed it on with half inch number six wood screws. This stuff is readily available at metal superstores or online. It's used a lot by hobbyists, I think, I buy this 300 millimeter by 1000 millimeter. That's about 12 inches by three feet. You can cut it with scissors. I also added some solder tacks to the joints for electrical continuity. At the bottom, I riveted and screwed on a two inch copper strap that runs outside and is connected to the DC and RF ground radial system. 
So, this copper sheet is my low impedance ground plane. Now, all of the PCBs I design have a continuous pore copper ground plane on the back side of the board. Notice how I use these short standoffs and screw the PC to the panel, component side down. I designed all of my boards with ground mounting holes. So, all of the active components and traces are mostly sandwiched between the copper ground sheet and the back side of the PCB ground plane. Output A and B from the combiner each then go to a four-way splitter to be routed to whichever radio I want. I made another video about how to build these four-way splitters using those same Murata chokes for magic tees and impedance matching. As always, I'll put a link to that video below. However, this splitter also has a second relay that I can use to toggle between a third antenna, which in my case is my nine circle array. I chose to do that on the input source of channel B. Using the flex radio, I am always RX receiving in diversity with the BOGs in one ear and the nine circle in the other. From the output of each splitter, I have a modified W7IUV 2N5109 preamp. This design uses a small SMD DCP68 transistor to replace the now pretty much unobtainium 2N5109. I have put both input and output attenuation on most of these amps, since really very little or no preamplification is needed. If you're interested in PCBs and detail about these DCP68 low impedance preamps, then just drop me an email. All interconnects on the switchboard are made with flexible 75 ohm RG59 coax. Now notice this PC board here in the middle. This is just a simple relay toggle to switch the output from channel A to go either into the splitter or to my AIM analyzer. When I toggle it to the analyzer, I can then sweep each individual RG6 feed line using the analyzer TDR function. This is great since if I see or hear an RX problem, I can easily do a TDR sweep to locate the problem and quickly effect a repair. So how do I switch all this mess? One of the best ham programs ever is the PST Rotator program by YO3DMU. I use the relay function in this program to drive these eight port ethernet relays. I used to use the Denkove USB boards, but they can be problematic to set up, whereas these ethernet boards are always visible on the LAN. I made another video about how to set these guys up, and I'll put a link to that video in the description below if you're interested. The PST program allows you to open multiple instances, one for each RX antenna. I have one for my nine circle receive array, one for my eight directions on the BOG channel A and the BOG channel B, and also one for my 160 meter transmit array. Another very convenient feature of this program is you can select the relays to switch based on a time schedule. I do this for my Perseus and RBN skimmer radios so they automatically switch from Europe to either uh, VK or ZL or Japan at a set time like, for example, after European sunrise. Each LAN relay box has eight relays, so obviously eight directions. Since only one relay will be toggled per direction, there will be times when multiple or shared external relays need to be activated. Learn how to use blocking diodes so one relay can drive multiple outside relays without conflict. The diode matrix for the nine circle array shown here is a little bit more complicated. This relay board is used to drive the relays on the combiner board to isolate the individual wires in the pairs. I control it with an older Denkove interface loaded on one of the PCs at my remote. Okay guys, that's been a lot of stuff. Perhaps few of you would ever duplicate exactly, but maybe there's some bits and pieces here and ideas that you can apply to your own station. 73, this is Steve, V6WZ.